Power 98.7 Podcast. 17 minutes after 2 o'clock, it's Power Lunch on Power 987. And uh, we're in studio with uh, Mama Felicia Mabuza Suttle. And we're going to be talking to her about uh, her latest book that uh, she has penned. The lines are open from the get go 0861 if you want to be a part of the conversation. She's going to be with us for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. And um, we're going to be chatting to her. And I don't know how to actually structure this interview because there's so much that you want to talk about with somebody like her. But we're also going to be, you know, touching on the Book. And I actually don't want to talk too much about the book because you must go and get it. It's called um, Live Your Dream. I didn't say Dare to Dream. That was the first book. This one is Live Your Dream. And uh, we're going to chat to her about that. But also just, uh, you know, pick her brains about a couple of things. And if you also want to get some pearls of wisdom, you better dial now. 0861987000. Send your tweets to at Power987 and at Power FM 987 Mom Felicia, thank you so much for joining us on Power Lunch. Thanks, Tabiso. What a pleasure and honor. First things first. Uh-huh. Please give us the secret to looking so good mm. all the time and for such a long time. Wow. Someone asked me, what do you use to stay looking so young? I said, I use oil of delay. Oil of delay. <laughs> <laughs> and do, do you package that and distribute it? Uh, you know, and I'm on preferment. You know what preferment is? Someone said, are you on retirement? I said, no, I'm on preferment. She said, what's re- a preferment? Mm. I said, I do only what I prefer, what to, prefer do. to do. And yes. I'm so honored and prefer to be with you today. I really appreciate it. You said actually in your book that you're at that point where you've decided that you are going to move away from the success model of living Mm -hmm. to now being significant. Mm -hmm. Before we even get into that, as I said, I, I don't know what not to talk about because there's so much that I'd love to talk about with you. When it comes to just who you are, I get a sense from... The I think it's the seventh chapter or the eighth chapter of your book, Boy, but you I think <laughs> I think even just throughout your career, where you, you've sometimes been perceived and misunderstood, mm-hmm. what is the one thing that you want to correct about how you are perceived, or at least how you found to be perceived, or you've you've heard that you're perceived? Well, I think heard I've been perceived more than anything else because I really believe that I live what I preach. I care for people. I love people. Whatever I do, I do with goodness in my heart. I know that God looks down on me and he smiles Mm. because he knows I'm doing what he's asked me to, what my purpose is on this earth. You know, I always say that uh, your life has a purpose. Your story is important. Your dreams count. Your voice matters. Mm. We're born to make an impact. So that's all I'm trying to do, my little impact in this world, and that is to uplift as many people as I can Mm -hmm. in my own little way. Where did that come from, though? Because you didn't wake up like that. At what point did somebody or something say or something happen that showed you what your purpose was, but that also gave you the courage to pursue it? You know, my grandmother started... um, the Zenzele YWC, or she was one of the pioneers of the Zenzele YWC in South Africa, um, with a woman called Mary Hall, who was Dr. Kuma's wife. And I used to watch these women. And then there was the Housewives League. As you rise, you raise others. So I was brought up with that Ubuntu. My grandmother always made sure that no one goes hungry in our neighborhood that she knew of. So it was by example, mm-hmm. and that's where really I got it from. When you started the Zolo Billy project, where you got young people involved in cultural activities, including dancing, and where you touched a lot of lives, did you believe, though, that what you were doing would achieve what it ultimately did? Because sometimes you start something and you're a bit apprehensive, you might have doubts, you might even have naysayers. Mm-hmm. How did that work for you? That was quite interesting because... Uh, One day, I mean, I used to see kids roaming around the streets aimlessly, and I worried about them until I saw one child hit by a car. And I said, what could I have done to have prevented that child from being hit by that car? Mm. And then I said, wait a minute, I'm a dancer, I can dance. It's an easy thing to get young people into. Then I was also the Lux model, and I thought, oh, I can teach kids self-esteem by... um, through my modeling 
a background thanks to a, a woman called Merona Manye, mm-hmm. Leslie Suhume's wife, and she used to teach us modeling. So I brought all these young people together. I put out a flyer, and I thought I'm going to get about 10 kids. The next thing, there were over 100 children lined up there mm-hmm. at the YWCA in Dube, and I'm saying, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Some of them were not even that much uh, younger than me, but in our African culture, we know that even if someone is two years younger than you, uh, older than you, you start respecting them. So I brought them all in, and I'm proud to see some of them and what they're doing today. Shadow Twala was one of them. Mm-hmm. Roni Matabate, uh, Zanele Mtembu, who was with ETV. So they are all doing very well. So I just wanted to make a difference mm. in the lives of others. And when you ask me of all the things that I have been involved with, from the talk show to my involvement with South African Airways, where we changed the colors of the plane, we brought diversity to the airline, we uh, made sure that we speak all languages that we speak in this country on the airline. All those are great things. But to me, the most important thing was Zuelo Pili. Mm. Mm-hmm. Where and and how was this confidence and the ability to dream nurtured as a child? Were you told things as parents, uh, you know, by your parents? Were you affirmed? Tell us that because I started off the show celebrating young, gifted and black individuals. Mm. And um, we spoke to somebody who's launching a website tonight, an artist in in KZN. Mm. And we've just spoken to a young poet who's jetting off to the U.S. Mm. tonight to represent Mm. us in the Poetry Slam. And how important it is that when you raise children, they grow up believing themselves from a very young age. Mm -hmm. And you also say in chapter eight of your book, how you are already affirming your granddaughter Mm -hmm. and and you you tell her the four Bs. The four Bs. Glam daughter. Your glam daughter. Glam daughter. daughter. Yeah, I'm not a grandmother. I'm a glamour. (laughs) Glamour Glamour. is a sexy looking older woman. We're actually going to be talking about some of these (laughs) phrases that you've coined. One of of my favorites is diva and your interpretation of that word. But let's go back to how as a child... Who said what to you that also just affirmed you and gave you that confidence to dream? Ironically, I had teachers who told me I was not capable. I could not. You were just beautiful. Ironically, I had family members, uncles, etc., who told me. I never forget, I was reading a huge book one time, and uh, it was Anna Karonina. And one of my uncles said to me, don't you think that book is too big for you? But <laughs> all that instead... I used that to turn my life around. Mm. I I took the positive in it and made sure that, took the negative and turned it into a positive. I'm the type of person who, I'll forgive, but I don't forget. Mm-hmm. I guess Mandela taught us that too. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I learned my lessons from what you have done to mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And I will never repeat the same mistake again with the same people. Mm. But my confidence... I'm not even sure where it comes from. I think it comes from having taken negativity and turned it into positivity. Mm. Um, After I got my degree, I remember going to look for the teacher who told me I was not capable of becoming somebody and found him and said, I got my degree. You nearly told me to drop out of school. Is this the teacher was saying you're beautiful just going to modeling and sell cosmetics? That That's you it. In the book. That's it. Yes, uh-huh. yes, yeah. Incidentally, yesterday we were, we were commemorating International World Teacher Day and we talked exactly about that and mm-hmm. we had people call in to say who are the teachers that molded them and, and positively mm-hmm. so, but we also wanted to talk about mm-hmm. those that negatively in, in, impacted on you, but mm-hmm. whose words you went against and That's you actually right. made something mm-hmm. of yourself. When you look back at the achievements that you talk about, we'll get into the book in a second, and you see, as you say, the role that you played in SAA, mm-hmm. you know, getting the 11 mm-hmm. official languages used in the greetings, but even mm-hmm. the colors, you mm-hmm. look at the impact of the individuals mm-hmm. that you've impacted. Mm-hmm. How does that feel? No, it feels so good. In fact, I think one of my proudest moments was uh, Captain Mpoma Mashele welcoming me on a flight. And he was with me at that time at South African Airways. Mm. And when he walked out in that uniform, and said, one of your products. Mm -hmm. I literally wept, and it's in the book as well. I literally wept when I saw, when he said that. Mm. And some of the flight attendants that were in in the book there are ones who said, 20 years ago, 
we are your products as well. Mm-hmm. So it, it, those are the heartwarming things. When I see young people who went to school on a scholarship that I had started for South African students in the U.S., today they're brand gurus, they are engineers, they are... Uh, one, I think one is a lawyer because he came back and then decided to do law. Mm-hmm. They have MBAs, they have PhDs, they have BAs. That is heartwarming. Mm-hmm. When I see someone like Zanelem Tembu come back and say, this is me today, I own my own company. Mm-hmm. When I see someone like Figile Butelezi, who was the CEO of the Women's Bank, those are things that are heartwarming. Mm. Lift someone, raise someone as you rise. Mm-hmm. And that is really my motto. You know, there are four types of people in this world. Those who watch things happen, those who wait for things to happen, those who wonder what happened, and those who make things happen. Mm. And I'm just the type of person who makes things happen. Mm-hmm. I wanted to start a restaurant one day. I never forget... The first it's words I'd written, moon. yeah. The mm. first words I'd written on a piece of yellow, pe- uh, of on legal pad was loaded baked potato. Mm-hmm. Someone <laughs> laughed at me and said, "Come on, you're going to start a re- restaurant, and that's the first thing we're going to have there." Mm-hmm. But you have to visualize what you want. You have, to, as a child, I remember my father used to drive us around neighborhoods. You spoke about North Cliff in your North book. Cliff. Yes, the hill. That's right, the house on the hill drove us to Santon, mm. Sandhurst, etc. And I used to say to my sister, one day I'm going to live in one of those houses. And my sister would say, you mean in the back room? I As said, no, no, in the mansion itself. Mm. I had pictures in my room of all the beautiful places I want to live in, all the beautiful homes I want to live in. Mm. And God has been great. I've been able to accomplish that dream. If you can dream it, mm-hmm. you can accomplish it. We're talking to Mama Felicia Mabuza Sattel. She's in the country uh, for a couple of days and uh, we're talking about uh, her book, Live Your Dream. And uh, this is connected in one way. But if you haven't read uh, Dare to Dream, you know, you're not losing out on anything as in you won't get lost, but it would be mm-hmm. good, obviously. There's a whole both chapter. Books. There's fact, a whole chapter mm-hmm. that you summarize uh, starting on, on the book just to refer to Dare to Dream um, to, to, to just give a uh, context to how this links to that. And uh, if you want to be a part of the conversation, you want to chat to her, 0861-987-000. Send us your tweets to at Tabi underscore S-I-K and at Power 987. And I'd love them to come to Scoops on uh, Thursday. We're going to be there and in the afternoon. This is Scoops at Monte Cassino. That's right. And mm. I'll be signing books there and having fun with whoever is there. Beautiful. I'm going to see if uh, I'll, I'll attend and I'll convince Mama uh, Felicia Mawiza to show us a dance move or two since she said she used to be a good dancer. <laughs> Are you still a good dancer? Oh, girl, I, I break it down. <laughs> I actually saw you at the uh, Cape Town International Jazz Festival I think it's six years ago. I remember now you, you do get down. I remember you wearing a very bright yellow canary suit. Uh-huh. Um, and you do. I, okay, I don't know why. It I must have been a Scudder girl. Possibly. <laughs> it is 2.30 time for the news headlines. Uh, getting to your calls and uh, tweets uh, as we continue our conversation with Mama Felicia Muguza Sattel talking about her book, Live Your Dream. Be part of the conversation. conversation. Call Power Lunch on 0861-987-000. Wanda Kumalo sent a tweet saying, my late mother used to love Mom Felicia. When she got eye spectacles, she said, I look like Felicia Mabuza. You really inspired her. Talking about spectacles, you've got a range of eyewear. Mm -hmm. Is that still in production? It is in production and it's selling beautifully well in South Africa and all over the continent. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to get into eyewear? Because I knew that at one point I'm getting older, so I'm going to need glasses. You might as well design your own. <laughs> might as well design my own. <laughs> We've got somebody on the line. Good afternoon, Mama. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Well, I'm still waiting for my pair, Felicia. <laughs> well, you send me your details and we'll talk about it. <laughs> Car- carry on Listen, talking because she's not, she's not getting your voice yet. But I know she's not. So introduce yourself, Khe. Hey. Hello, I'm the little girl that you took out of the dusty streets of Soweto and taught me how to dance. No. I did the Latin American dance and did very well at the competition. Shadu! <laughs> oh, let me tell you, Tavis, that smile that girl had on the dance floor. Mm. She was amazing. Wow. And her letter in this book. I saw that. It uplifts me every day. 
Can I also share something with you? Mama Shedo Talo is, is a judge on the South African version of Essay's Got Talent. Uh-huh. And now that you've told me that, because um, she works with, with Fresh on the show, I'm going to tell the producers of the show that she must show her talent to the people that are part of the show. I've That's got you, Mama it. Shedo. I've yes. got you. Uh-huh. She was good. Yeah. She was good. We'll see if she I still has it. I tell you, though, we did not only learn to dance with Felicia. She taught us a lot about life in general. Mm -hmm. My love for music, firstly. The other day I was listening to um, the Nina Simone Revisited uh, Mm. and and they singing to the young Gifted and Black. Well, Felicia made us listen to that song, Mm -hmm. listen to a whole lot of music. Remember, we did the rumba to it, too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes, we did the rumba to it And we did uh, the cha-cha-cha to say it loud. Bang, bang. I'm black and I'm proud. (laughs) Bang, bang. (laughs) And then we did rumba to, to... to be young, no, no, uh, Dinah Ross, reach out and touch. Oh, yes, and that yeah. was the theme song for your show That's at right. some point. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Mum Shadow, so she, what, she what's the... a very special, uh, you know, very special place in my heart. She's She keeps on moving the, 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 the goalpost, though, because whenever <laughs> I think I'm getting to where she is, she moves it even further. So, you know, Dr. Mabuza Sattel, please will you stop now? So we can get there. <laughs> give us, give us a chance. Shadow, you are there. You are, in fact, you've moved beyond, above and beyond. So I really oh, take my head off for you. And I was just talking to my sister, Pam, in um, Miami, and we're talking about you. And we are all so proud of your work. Each time oh. I talk about people who have really made a mark. I mention you. And she actually did that at the beginning of the show. She highlighted you as one of the people that she remembers from those days. Thank you for continuing to shine the light. Thank you, And I've just driven past your house here in Cape Town. And I'm thinking (laughs) that you will be throwing a party, which you do very well. (laughs) I'll be in Cape Town and we have to connect when I'm there. I'm doing a breakfast for Ubuntu Foundation. Well, lovely. Thank you so much. And continue to do the lovely work that you do and continue to inspire us, um, you know, because while you still do the things you do, we gain strength from it. So thank you, my sister. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mam Shadow. So we'll see you on thank the you. dance floor of Essays Got Talent. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Bye. <laughs> this is Power Lunch on Power 987. We're talking how to live your dream. What is the essence of this book and why did you want to do a follow-up book to Dare to Dream? Dare to dream was wishes. I wished for all those things. Mm. Live your dream. I'm living all the things that I wished. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, it's not even about me. It's about you. Mm -hmm. It's about unleashing the diva in you. It's about using change to propel success. It is how to deal with negaholics. And mm-hmm. I know half, Love the the time, <laughs> half the time we listen to all these negative things. I don't even hear them mm. because I'm driven by a purpose. It's about affirmations, helping affirm yourself. As I said, my little grandbaby, Glam, Glam baby, baby, hello. <laughs> at two years old, knows that she always says, I am bright, yes. I am brave, yes. I am bold, I am blessed, and I'm beautiful. Teach kids early Mm -hmm. to affirm themselves, to believe in themselves. Beyonce says before she goes on stage, she stands there and affirms herself. I am worthy. I am blessed. Mm -hmm. I'm a diva. And she goes on on that stage and performs like a diva. Mm -hmm. Serena Williams says when she's playing a tennis match, during the time she has to go and sit down on that chair to get ready for the next set or the next game. She sits there, reads affirmations, recites affirmations. Sometimes you've seen her with a pen and a pen, a piece of paper. And that's really what affirmations are all about. Mm. We are all geniuses. Unleash the genius in you. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the diva that uh, you uh, um, have have, have used often. Mm -hmm. What does the D-I-V-A stand for uh, in your life? Divinely inspired, victoriously amazing sisters. Beautiful. Divas. Mm-hmm. And your affirmation when you leave the house, you've also shared that in the book. I have so many because it depends on the day. Okay, what I, was today's? Today's was I looked in the mirror. I knew that I'm jet lagged. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. But I had to tell myself that 
I'm going to be able to do all these interviews I've been doing today. I looked mm-hmm. at myself. I said, you are blessed, girl. You are beautiful. Mm-hmm. You look good. Get out there. Get on and go and inspire others. I love the one mm-hmm. where you talk about I, I'm ready to shake and bake. Shake and, and bake. I'm ready to change. That's I'm ready it. to be the change. That's it. <laughs> if there's one thing that you want somebody reading the book to get out of this, if they get nothing else, what is that one thing? No one and nothing can stop you from living your dream. Mm -hmm. You are your own enemy if you're going to stop yourself. Get out there, be creative, figure out how you get out there and meet people that are going to help you. I always say take pictures with successful people, as you can see at the back of of the book. And yes, some of them I've interviewed, some of them I've had dinner with, some of them I've managed to get a quote or two or just encounter them personally. But just by osmosis, being close to them, I felt that I can also be as great as they are. Mm -hmm. So that's really the the key to this book. Get close to people that you admire. Mm -hmm. Find out how they did it and you do it. This is the voice of Mom Felicia Mawiza Sattel, and uh, we're chatting to her on Power Lunch on Power 987 about her book, Live Your Dream. One of the things that I really admire about you is how you've been able to just epitomize the woman who is able to do it all and be it all. How do you strike that balance also having sustained a very happy marriage that also had to endure that separation for what, 10 to 15 years when you're traveling between mm-hmm. Atlanta and the U.S. and just the fact that you are both such busy individuals as well? Wow, where do I start? <laughs> I, th- I think you're grounded if you have someone in your life that you know believes in your dream the same way mm. as you believe in your own dream. I believe in my husband's dream. He believes in my dream. He knows, as you read in the book, he's forward. In the beginning of the book, yeah. He, When I said to him, I am leaving, I'm going to South Africa. To heed the to call. heed the call of Nelson Mandela. Mm. There was no way he could have said no. He knew that he's losing his wife, as I said. I moved from a hot bed to a cold bed, <laughs> from cold meals to, from hot meals to cold meals. Mm. But those are sacrifices. As I say, for me... It's all about purpose. Mm -hmm. And I guess the Almighty up there is saying, you are doing what what you're destined to do. But I think what's also beautiful that is also in the book is how he says that when he visited um, the country Mm -hmm. and the subsequent visits after that one, he realized how there's no way he could have stood in your way, Mm -hmm. seeing the impact that what you were doing was having in the lives of the people in this country through your work, you know, the TV work that you did, and also just going back to the times where you facilitated the scholarships to those 30 young South Africans. Mm -hmm. Your children... How have you maintained a close relationship and the bond that you seem to have with them as well? It was good. It, it, it was hard, first and foremost, I must be honest with you. But I, I try to let my children understand one thing, that sometimes you've been called on a mission mm. and you have to answer to that mission, to that call. My daughter, Lindiwe, is a singer and she wanted to sing. And I said, no, no offense. Mm. All I'm going to ask you to do is get your MBA first. Mm-hmm. And after that, I really am not going to bother you. She got her MBA, sent me a tweet and said, a, 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 sorry, text message and said, I got your MBA. <laughs> Let me do what I want now. <laughs> now my other daughter, Zanele, mm-hmm. has followed her passion, her dream. She started a tennis academy. She had children's clothing range, which is doing well. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, her passion is tennis. Mm-hmm. Started a tennis academy. She has a huge following. They have about a thousand kids in the tennis program from New Jersey to New York to Miami now. Mm. But from, I, I don't quite know even how to answer that question, but when there's a calling, you have to answer it. Mm. And sometimes my husband says there were times he thought, this is it. Mm. I'm losing my wife. And I also was, this is it. Mm. Right now, it's my passion and what I want to do in South Africa. So Mm. stay focused on what you want in life Mm. and make it happen. How do you strike that balance, though? Because often it seems as if something's got to give. And clearly here it was your family that for a period Mm. sacrificed having the mother, having the the, the, the wife. But how do you then just strike the balance just for you as an individual? 
you know, it, it affected the family a lot. I'm the first to admit. And then I had people at home saying, how can a woman give up her family and be here away from the husband? My husband also got a lot of messages and innuendo, whatever you want to call it, from friends who said, how can you let your beautiful wife leave you and be far In away a foreign from foreign country. Mm. Away from your family. Mm. It was hard. I'm not going to lie. There were many lonely nights as I drove into those gates in my house in Northcliffe and those huge gates closed behind us. Mm. After 300 people in studio, 200 people in studio, it was lonely. I used to cry mm. so many times, but I knew I'm on a mission mm -hmm. to do something. And I'm happy to see the shows being played again. Yes. And, um, Are you being credited for that and paid for it? <laughs> <laughs> Number you one. Know, you know, some things we don't do for money. Mm -hmm. You do them for a cause. Mm -hmm. And that's how I feel about the show. What is the one thing over your years as a couple that has sustained you that you want to share with other couples? Because marriage is hard enough just being in the same house. But now when you're miles apart at a time. My husband is my best friend. Mm. He's not my lover first. He's my best friend, my confidant. Mm. If I share anything with him, that's one person that I know will it will remain with him mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. I share anything with him. So I think friendship first mm -hmm. and then the rest will follow. I always say if it's about money, the money goes that relationship is going to be gone. Mm. If it's about the good looks, the good looks, they go at good. some point. Mm. If it's about the bed, we get tired sometimes, <laughs> he we get headaches. <laughs> so make sure it's about friendship. That's my, my recipe. Mm -hmm. With your show that you're doing in the U.S., you say you're passionate about changing the way Africa as a continent is perceived. Are you getting feedback that that is actually having an impact on working? You know, I give it to South African Tourism. They've done a fantastic job now. We, we took, uh, took uh, Stu rather, took on the uh, baton and has taken it to another level. We brought the Today Show here. We brought uh, Fox, Fox and Friends. We mm -hmm. did something Fox and Friends here. We brought... Um, the CBS Morning Show here one time. Mm -hmm. So just bringing them to South Africa has also helped. But the show in the U.S. is aimed at taking celebrities who have been to Africa, uh, not just South Africa, and helping them talk about their experience in Africa and encouraging more and more Americans or internationals to come to this beautiful country. Mm -hmm. And when they go back, they just... I'm in love with South Africa. Never forget my neighbor then, Steve Harvey. I said to him, Steve, you have to go to South Africa. This is when you were living at, at the, the penthouse Trump, at Trump. Trump. That's Trump right. Mm -hmm. I wish it was a penthouse. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, the apartment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, as Steve said, no, no, no. You want me to go to the South, to South Africa? Mm -hmm. I don't even go to the South in America. <laughs> you want me to go to the South in Africa? <laughs> but when he ultimately came here, mm -hmm. he said it was the most beautiful place he's ever visited, the most memorable holiday mm. that he's ever had. So that's what's good about South Africa, the warmth of the people, mm. the, the hues, the smell, the, the, the scenery. Mm. That's one thing that makes it easy for me to just pull out my phone and show them everybody. Yeah. This is why you, should, you have you to visit. Go. I listen to people talking about going to Brazil or Australia and I literally, if I, I'm eavesdropping and I hear it, <laughs> I take my phone and I get my Cape Town and Johannesburg pictures. Yeah. And I said, guess what? Yeah. Before you go there, try this place. <laughs> it is. And they look at me like, who is this? Yeah, why are you in our conversation? <laughs> but that's how passionate I am about South Africa and how much I love it. Mm. My heart is in South Africa. My body is in America. Mm. Thank you that you came to grace us here with your presence and your book on Power Lunch. I'm going to get my copy signed. If you want to buy a copy of the book at uh, Scoobs at Monte Cassino, where uh, Mum Felicia will be signing the books and obviously being sold there as well, get there to Scoobs at Monte Cassino. She's going to be doing a book signing at uh, sixteen at 1830. That is at uh, half past six. And this is going to be at Scoobs at Monte Cassino for the book uh, Live Your Dream. And for more information, uh, you can go to info at helco.co.za. That's H-E-L-C-O dot C-O dot Mama Felicia, Radaboha.
go lebogana go menagane hold on hold on hold on we cannot ignore ike ike uh, is on the line i didn't see that let's take ike before we let go and then we'll come to let's go zulu good afternoon ike Hi, hi, my sister, and she said, I can't call mom Felicia because I know she still looks good. Eh? <laughs> but I want to say this. There was a time in the 90s, you know, she took a lot of criticism from the media because at that time, I'm, I'm also included because she did not understand. Ike, your point. line, your line. Please stand on Can one leg. Stand on one leg. <laughs> yes, I can hear now. Oh, it's getting worse. But let's try again. Continue. I'm saying she took a lot of criticism from the media. Uh, in the early 90s, because we thought that she was Americanizing the South African society. But now that I have a better understanding and a new appreciation, I think that she was brave. You know, and I'm so glad that South Africa had and still has achievers and dreamers like her, you know, in a country where, like, you know, things are not going the way we thought that they should be, you know. But um, I just want to wish her all the best in the future endeavors, you know, and say that, you know, uh, she is a dreamer and she inspires a lot of us. Thank you, Ike. But as Thank I say, you. when you're a pioneer, you're always going to be knocked down. Always remember that all you have to do is stand up and continue moving. Wheeler, my money, I didn't see your tweet uh, who asked that I take a picture because Mama is such a role model and thank you for celebrating her. And uh, Totli Somputi says uh, she's, he's captured by As You Rise, You Raise Others. And uh, Totli also says uh, she has a media, she has such, uh, she still has a media voice. She can be on radio like yesterday. <laughs> thank can you I so much. Can I close out with these seven strategies for success if Please. there's time? Please do. Number one, be focused on achieving what you want in life without feeling guilty. Follow your passion and profits will follow. Number two, revel in your success, big or small. Stop competing with the Joneses. Compete against your last success. That is sanity. Develop courage and take risks. Number four, read biographies of successful people and take pictures with them. Number five, Take pictures of successful people, and who knows, by osmosis, you too can become as successful. Number six, walk tall and exude confidence at all times. And finally, South Africa, especially to my female friends, smile. (laughs) It's the most powerful thing to wear. People who smile, look successful, sound successful. But thanks a million for the opportunity. And give my love to Given. I, I am so proud of him. I, I am proud of him. He'll be he'll be sad to know that he missed you here. Yeah. Power ninety eight point seven. Now we're talking.